I always loved hiking alone. It gave me a sense of freedom and adventure, and a chance to escape from the stress of everyday life. I had hiked many trails in different states, but my favorite one was the Appalachian Trail in Maine. It was one of the most scenic and challenging trails in the country, spanning over 2,000 miles across 14 states. I had hiked parts of it before, but this time I wanted to do the whole thing. I packed my backpack with the essentials, a tent, a sleeping bag, a water filter, a first aid kit, a map, a compass, a flashlight, a knife, some food, and some clothes. I also brought my phone, but I knew I wouldn't have much signal in the wilderness. I left a note for my family, telling them where I was going and when I expected to be back. I drove to the trailhead, parked my car, and started my journey. The first few days were amazing. I saw beautiful landscapes, wildlife, and waterfalls. I met some friendly fellow hikers along the way, who shared stories and tips with me. I felt happy and alive, enjoying the fresh air and the solitude. I camped at designated sites where I cooked my meals, set up my tent, and slept under the stars. But things started to go wrong on the fifth day. I was hiking through a dense forest, following the white blazes that marked the trail. I noticed that the sky was getting darker, and I heard thunder in the distance. I checked my map and saw that the nearest shelter was still a few miles away. I decided to hurry up and try to reach it before the storm hit. I was walking fast, but the trail was steep and rocky. I stumbled on a loose stone and twisted my ankle. I felt a sharp pain and fell to the ground. I cursed and looked at my injury. It was swollen and bruised, and I could barely stand on it. I knew I had to keep moving, but it was hard to walk. I leaned on my hiking pole and limped along the trail. The storm arrived sooner than I expected. It started to rain heavily, and the wind howled. The trees swayed and creaked, and branches snapped and fell. I was soaked and cold, and I could barely see where I was going. I hoped that the shelter was close, but I had no idea how far I had come. I checked my phone, but it was dead. I had forgotten to charge it the night before. I felt a surge of panic and frustration. I was alone, injured, and lost in the storm. I kept walking, hoping to find the shelter or any sign of civilization. But the trail seemed to go on forever and I didn't see anyone or anything. I started to wonder if I had taken a wrong turn, or if the trail had been washed away by the rain. I felt hopeless and scared, and I wished I had never come here. I don't know how long I walked, but it felt like hours. The storm didn't stop, and the night fell. I was in complete darkness, except for the occasional flashes of lightning. I heard strange noises in the woods, like growls and howls. I wondered if there were any wild animals around, and if they could smell me. I wished I had a gun, or at least a fire. But I had nothing to protect myself, except for my knife. I was about to give up, when I saw a faint light in the distance. I thought it was a hallucination, but I followed it anyway. I hoped it was the shelter, or a house, or a car, or anything that could help me. I dragged myself towards the light, ignoring the pain and the fear. As I got closer, I realized that the light was coming from a fire. I saw a small clearing in the woods, where a campfire was burning. I also saw a tent, a backpack, and a person. I felt a surge of relief and joy. I had found another hiker, who could help me. I shouted and waved, hoping to get their attention. But as I approached the campsite, I felt something was wrong. The person was sitting by the fire, but they didn't move or respond to me. They were wearing a hooded jacket, and I couldn't see their face. They looked like a statue or a corpse. I felt a chill run down my spine, and I stopped in my tracks. I called out again, but there was no answer. I wondered if they were asleep, or dead, or something else. I decided to get closer and check on them. Maybe they were just unconscious, and I could wake them up. Maybe they had a phone, or a radio, or a flare that I could use to call for help. Maybe they were my only chance of survival. I took a few steps towards the fire, but then I heard a loud roar behind me. I turned around and saw a huge bear standing on its hind legs, staring at me with its red eyes. 
It had blood on its fur and claws, and it looked angry and hungry. It had been following me all along, waiting for the right moment to attack. I realized that I had walked into a trap, and that the person by the fire was not a hiker, but a bait. I felt a surge of adrenaline and fear, and I looked for a way to escape. I remembered that I had a bear spray in my backpack, which I had bought as a precaution. I quickly grabbed it and pulled the trigger, spraying a cloud of pepper spray at the bear. The bear roared in pain and anger and backed away from me. It rubbed its eyes and nose, trying to get rid of the burning sensation. I seized the opportunity and ran away. I got away from the bear. This was the scariest experience I ever had in the woods. I had always wanted to hike the Appalachian Trail, so when I got a chance to take a month off work, I decided to go for it. I packed my backpack with everything I needed, including a tent, a sleeping bag, a stove, a map, and a compass. I also brought a satellite phone, just in case of emergencies. I planned to hike solo, but I wasn't worried. I had done plenty of research and prepared well. I was confident I could handle anything the trail threw at me. I started from Georgia, heading north. The first few days were amazing. I saw beautiful scenery, met friendly fellow hikers, and enjoyed the solitude and peace of nature. I felt free and happy, like I was living my dream. I made good progress, averaging about 15 miles a day. I camped at designated shelters or campsites, where I sometimes chatted with other hikers or read a book before falling asleep. Everything changed on the 10th day. I had reached a section of the trail that crossed a remote and rugged area of Tennessee. The weather was cloudy and cold, and the trail was steep and rocky. I didn't see anyone else that day, which was unusual. I felt a bit lonely and uneasy, but I shrugged it off. I told myself it was just a challenge, and I was up for it. I hiked until dusk, and then looked for a place to set up my tent. I found a flat spot near a stream, and decided to camp there. I pitched my tent, cooked some dinner, and checked my phone. I had no signal, which was not surprising. I decided to call it a night, and crawled into my sleeping bag. I was tired, but I couldn't fall asleep. I heard strange noises outside, like rustling, snapping, and growling. I tried to ignore them, thinking they were just animals or the wind. But they got louder and closer, and I started to panic. I grabbed my flashlight and zipped open my tent. I shone the light around and saw nothing, but I felt a presence, a menacing one. I felt like I was being watched, hunted, stalked. I quickly zipped up my tent and reached for my phone. I turned it on and prayed for a signal. I got one bar and dialed 911. I waited for the operator to answer, but all I heard was static. I tried again and again, but nothing. I was alone and in danger. I didn't know what to do. I wished I had never come here. I wished I had someone with me. I wished I could get out of here. I heard a loud roar and then a thud. Something hit my tent and knocked it over. I screamed and scrambled out of the tent. I saw a huge, dark shape looming over me. It was a bear, a black bear. It had blood on its mouth and claws on its paws. It looked hungry and angry. It snarled and lunged at me. I dodged and ran. I ran as fast as I could, away from the bear, away from the campsite, away from the trail. I ran into the woods, into the darkness, into the unknown. I don't know how long I ran or where I went. I just ran until I couldn't run anymore. I collapsed on the ground, exhausted and terrified. I looked around and realized I was lost. I had no idea where I was or how to get back. I had no map, no compass, no phone, no food, no water, no shelter, no hope. I was alone and in danger. I started to cry and to pray. I prayed for help, for rescue, for survival. I prayed for a miracle. I don't know if anyone heard my prayers or if anyone cared, but I know that I was lucky. I was lucky that I didn't die that night. I was lucky that I found a way out of the woods. I was lucky that I was alive.
I always loved camping, especially in the wilderness. There was something about being alone with nature that made me feel alive and free. That's why I decided to take a solo trip to Wyoming, one of the best states in America for camping. I wanted to explore the vast and beautiful landscapes, see the wildlife, and maybe even catch a glimpse of the legendary Yellowstone National Park. I rented a car and drove from my home in Colorado to a campsite near Cody, Wyoming. It was called High Plains Camping, Carrot 2 Carrot 4, and it had good reviews online. It was a small and quiet place, with only a few other campers around. The owner was friendly and helpful, and he gave me a map of the nearby trails and attractions. He also warned me to be careful of bears and wolves, and to always carry a whistle and a pepper spray with me. I set up my tent in a secluded spot, away from the other campers. I wanted to have some privacy and enjoy the silence. I unpacked my gear and made a fire. I cooked some hot dogs and beans, and ate them while watching the sunset. The sky was clear and the stars were bright. I felt peaceful and happy. The next day, I woke up early and got ready for a hike. I put on my backpack, grabbed my water bottle and my camera, and headed to the trailhead. I chose a moderate trail that would take me to a scenic overlook. The owner said it was one of his favorite spots, and that I would have a great view of the mountains and the valley. The hike was amazing. The trail was well marked and easy to follow. The scenery was stunning. I saw green meadows, colorful wildflowers, and towering pine trees. I heard birds singing, squirrels chattering, and streams flowing. I felt like I was in a fairy tale. I reached the overlook after about two hours of hiking. It was worth it. The view was breathtaking. I could see the snow-capped peaks of the Rockies, the sparkling waters of the Shoshone River, and the vast plains of Wyoming. I took out my camera and snapped some pictures. I sat down on a rock and admired the beauty. I decided to stay there for a while and have a snack. I opened my backpack and took out a granola bar and an apple. I ate them slowly, savoring the taste. I felt a gentle breeze on my face and a warm sun on my back. I closed my eyes and relaxed. I don't know how long I stayed there, but it must have been at least an hour. I was so absorbed in the moment that I didn't notice anything else. I didn't hear the rustling in the bushes behind me. I didn't see the shadow looming over me. I didn't feel the breath on my neck. I only realized something was wrong when I heard a low growl in my ear. I opened my eyes and turned my head. I saw a pair of yellow eyes staring at me. I saw a mouth full of sharp teeth. I saw black fur and a long snout. I saw a wolf. I screamed and jumped to my feet. The wolf lunged at me, biting my arm. I felt a surge of pain and fear. I dropped my camera and my backpack. I reached for my pepper spray, but it was too late. The wolf had me pinned to the ground. It snarled and snapped at my face. I tried to fight back, but it was too strong. I knew I was going to die. I thought of my family, my friends, my life. I thought of all the things I wanted to do, but never did. I thought of how stupid I was to go camping alone, without telling anyone where I was. I thought of how I would never see the sunrise again. I closed my eyes and waited for the end. But it didn't come. Instead I heard a gunshot. And another. And another. I heard the wolf yelp and let go of me. I heard it run away. I opened my eyes and saw a man standing over me. He had a rifle in his hands. He was wearing a cowboy hat and a plaid shirt. He looked like a local. He knelt down and checked my wounds. He said something, but I couldn't hear him. I was too shocked and weak. He wrapped a bandana around my arm and lifted me up. He carried me to his truck, which was parked nearby. He drove me to the nearest hospital, which was about an hour away. He saved my life. I don't remember much of what happened next. I only remember waking up in a hospital bed, with tubes and wires attached to me. I still wonder what would have happened if that person hadn't saved me. I had always wanted to go camping in Wyoming, the best state in America for camping. I heard it had amazing scenery, wildlife, 
and free campsites. I decided to take a road trip with my old car and explore the wilderness. I packed my tent, sleeping bag, flashlight, and some food and water. I was ready for an adventure. I drove for hours, enjoying the views of the mountains, forests, and plains. I saw signs for Yellowstone and Grand Teton, but I wanted to find a more secluded spot. I followed a dirt road that led me to a small campground near a lake. It was called Wilson State Park, Carrot 2 Carrot 2, and it looked like a perfect place to spend the night. There were only a few other campers there, mostly families with kids and dogs. I found a spot near the edge of the lake, where I could see the stars and hear the water. I set up my tent, made a fire, and cooked some beans. I felt relaxed and happy. I was alone, but not lonely. I decided to take a walk around the lake before going to bed. I grabbed my flashlight and headed out. The night was dark and quiet, except for the occasional sound of crickets and frogs. I enjoyed the fresh air and the feeling of freedom. I walked for about half an hour, until I reached the other side of the lake. There I saw something that made me stop in my tracks. It was a large, humanoid creature, standing on two legs, covered in fur. It had glowing red eyes, long claws, and sharp teeth. It looked like a cross between a bear and a wolf, but bigger and more terrifying. It was holding a bloody carcass of a deer in its hands, ripping it apart with its mouth. It was a sight I would never forget. I felt a surge of fear and panic. I wanted to run, but I was frozen in place. The creature noticed me and turned its head. It stared at me with its red eyes and let out a loud roar. It dropped the deer and started to run towards me. I realized it was hungry, and I was its next meal. I snapped out of my shock and turned around. I ran as fast as I could, hoping to reach my car. I heard the creature behind me, gaining on me. I could feel its breath on my neck, and its claws on my back. I screamed, but no one heard me. I was too far from the campground, and too close to death. I reached the edge of the lake where my car was parked. I fumbled with the keys, trying to unlock the door. The creature was right behind me, ready to pounce. I managed to open the door and get inside. I slammed it shut and locked it. The creature hit the window with its paw, cracking the glass. It roared and scratched the door, trying to get in. I started the engine and stepped on the gas. I drove away from the lake, leaving the creature behind. I didn't stop until I reached the nearest town. I checked into a motel and collapsed on the bed. I was shaking and sweating. I had cuts and bruises all over my body. I looked at my car and saw the damage. The window was broken, the door was dented, and the paint was scratched. I wondered what the creature was, and if it was still out there. I wondered if anyone would believe me. I decided to never go camping again. I learned my lesson. The wilderness is not a place for me. I had always wanted to go camping in Montana, one of the best states for camping in America. I had heard so much about its natural beauty, its hiking trails, and its wildlife. I decided to rent a cabin at Wilson State Park, a scenic area near a large lake. The cabin was small but cozy, with a fireplace, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a bedroom. It was surrounded by trees and had a view of the water. I thought it was the perfect place to relax and enjoy nature. I arrived at the cabin on a Friday afternoon, after a long drive from my home in Colorado. I unpacked my car, checked the cabin, and made sure everything was working. I was happy to see that there was Wi-Fi, although the signal was weak. I decided to go for a walk around the campsite which was fairly large and had about 20 other cabins. Most of them were empty, as it was off-season. I saw a few other campers, but they were far away and didn't seem to notice me. I felt a sense of solitude and peace. I returned to my cabin as the sun was setting. I lit a fire in the fireplace, cooked some dinner, and watched some TV. I checked my phone and saw that I had no messages or calls. I didn't mind... I wanted to disconnect from the world for a while. I went to bed early, feeling tired and sleepy. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling cold and thirsty. 
I got up and went to the kitchen to get a glass of water. As I was drinking, I heard a noise outside. It sounded like footsteps on the porch. I froze, wondering who could be out there. I looked through the window, but it was too dark to see anything. I grabbed a flashlight and opened the door, ready to confront whoever was trespassing. I stepped outside and shone the flashlight around. There was no one there. I felt a chill run down my spine. I walked around the cabin, looking for signs of someone or something. I saw nothing, except for some animal tracks on the ground. They looked like deer or elk hooves. I shrugged, thinking that maybe I had heard an animal passing by. I went back inside, locked the door, and returned to bed. I tried to fall asleep, but I couldn't. I kept hearing noises outside, like branches snapping, leaves rustling, and water splashing. I told myself that it was just the wind, or the lake, or the wildlife. I tried to ignore them, but they got louder and louder. I felt a growing sense of dread and fear. I wondered if I was safe in the cabin, or if something was out there, watching me, waiting for me. I got up again and checked the windows and doors. They were all locked and secure. I looked outside, but I still couldn't see anything. I decided to call the park ranger, to see if he could help me. I picked up my phone and dialed the number that was on the cabin's brochure. It rang and rang, but no one answered. I checked the time and saw that it was 3 a.m. I guessed that the ranger was asleep, or away, or maybe there was no ranger at all. I felt a surge of panic and frustration. I was alone, in the middle of nowhere, with no one to help me. I decided to turn on the TV, to distract myself and calm myself down. I turned it on and flipped through the channels. There was nothing but static and snow. I tried to adjust the antenna, but it didn't help. I realized that the Wi-Fi was also gone. I checked my phone and saw that I had no signal, no service, no connection. I felt a wave of terror and disbelief. I was cut off from the world isolated, trapped. I started to hyperventilate and sweat. I felt like I was going crazy. I wondered if this was a nightmare, or a prank, or a trap. I wondered if someone was doing this to me, messing with me, torturing me. I wondered if I was going to die, or worse. I grabbed a knife from the kitchen and ran to the bedroom. I locked the door and hid under the bed. I held the knife tightly, ready to fight for my life. I stayed there for what seemed like hours, listening to the noises outside. They got closer and closer, until they were right outside the cabin. I heard something scratching at the door, trying to get in. I heard something growling and snarling, like a wild animal. I heard something banging and breaking, like a man-man. I screamed and cried, praying for help, praying for salvation. Then, everything went silent. I heard nothing, except for my own heartbeat and breathing. I waited, hoping that it was over, hoping that it was gone. After a while, I got out of there, and thankfully, nothing weird happened again.